Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, for yet more evidence that the media is handling Vice President Kamala Harris with kid gloves, look no further than how CBS chose to report on her new No Taxes on Tips policy, policy that received a less warm reception when Donald Trump proposed it just a few weeks ago. That's just how it goes, however. Check out Time Magazine's latest cover story, a glowing profile of Harris that hails her moment. Her moment is here, Amber. Beautiful, stunning and brave. Aren't uh, you proud? Yeah, as a woman, country? if I finally have representation, right. uh, no, so I nice. mean, the best part of this Time Magazine cover is that traditionally when someone gets the cover of Time, they sit for an interview for she their profile. She didn't even participate. She didn't even do the interview. In fact, about halfway through the piece, which is very glowing, mind you, about halfway through, they admit that she did not participate. They say um, that she has been avoiding the media and declined to join time for the interview. It's sort of buried in a little paragraph with parentheses around it. She didn't it. make time for time. She didn't make time for time. Um, and that time was it. They just time. had a, had a baby little sentence about it and everyone's gonna move on. It's been more than three weeks since she rose to the top of the ticket after Biden stepped down from his reelection bid. And she has not answered more than two questions unscripted since that time. And they were, I, maybe it was three, they were taken on the tarmac from uh, media right after a Donald Trump rally, I believe. So all three of the questions were about Donald Trump and her answers were maybe a sentence long before she jetted off to her next scripted campaign event. I mean, this is untenable. I actually think, and I'm curious to hear your perspective on this, I think the media is going to start pushing her harder because they're going to be angry that they're not getting access to her. Aren't they going to run out of, you know, clickbaity, fluffy headlines they can write about her without her giving them anything? I mean, from her perspective, why should she bother engaging them at all if the coverage is going to be this positive without right. her doing anything? And we, you know, the coverage, the coverage is crazy. It has been so favorable to her. I don't know if that's because it's been a while, because the coverage of Biden had gotten somewhat moderated from the mainstream media for a while and then became just outright hostile for a period of time. This is back to, this is like Obama era and then some in terms of how historic and transformative the candidacy is, the way they're describing it, that kind of thing. Um, but you're right, they're gonna start getting upset maybe that they don't hear anything from her. Well, the Biden example is why I think that might happen sooner rather than later because towards the last year or so of Biden's time in office, um, back in, let's say, January, the media started being very critical yeah. of the fact that he was one of the least accessible presidents in modern history. And the whole game with the media and the Democrats is that it's a quid pro quo. Um, the media gets writes glowing profiles in exchange for access to the candidate. And right now they're basically getting on background quotes from her campaign aides and maybe some off the record type of stuff from her campaign that they can spin into one of these glowing profile pieces, but eventually they're gonna wanna sit down with Kamala herself um, because they yes. have the Democrats have to uphold their end of the bargain. The media never loved Joe Biden, to be perfectly honest, because he is not a good, he's not a, he's not, he's boring. There's not a lot to say about him. I mean, he was he, he was not the candidate of the media when he ran in 2020. That was like everyone else. It was Elizabeth Warren for the most part. Um, they, you know, they found him, and you can see it by like the decline. There was the COVID bump and everything. And then there was just the absolute decline of, uh, of you know, mainstream cable news and print journalism and news websites because people are tuning out the news to the extent it involves Joe Biden because he's just kind of boring. He's just an old dude. He's not creating new content to engage with the way Trump is. Uh, and there's nothing historical from, you know, from the identity politics kind of standpoint of the mainstream media. There's nothing historic and exciting about his candidacy. So I think they're just super happy to have someone new in the mix to talk about. But uh, yeah, she's not... She's not providing that. I think her strategy, though, is just don't rock the boat and I, yeah, I, just gonna, wait it out. And I might win, and yeah. that might work. It might work. I, I suspect that 90 days is too long to, to totally withhold this kind of momentum that she's received over the past couple of weeks. In fact, we've already seen in polls last week that it's starting to 
wane a little bit. Um, there was a CNBC and Rasmussen poll that had Trump back up by about three to four percentage yeah. points. There were a couple of other polls that had her up three to four percentage points, all within the margin of error. Trump's still ahead on pretty much all of the issues that matter most to voters, whether it's immigration, economy, or inflation. The only one she's ahead on is abortion. The fundamentals of the race are exactly where they were before the debate between Trump and Joe Biden, and then it was a tight race. Yeah. Now there's 90 days where anything could happen. And I think she will be forced to speak at some point. The question though is, even if the media does get the sit down interview, are they going to ask the burning questions? The primary one is what we were talking about earlier in today's episode, which is, were you lying then or are you lying now? Which is the real Kamala? Are you the right. dyed in the wool progressive or are you the blue dog Democrat, neoliberal uh, that comes from you know the DNC planted candidate I, wish list? I would like her to be asked, who is in charge of the country right now? Amen. Run- Did you know about Joe Biden's cognitive decline and were you complicit in the effort to disguise that from the right. American people? I mean, that's valid given that he is still technically the president. Everyone seems to have forgotten that <laughs> like, Joe Biden is yeah. the president, actually. And, and he actually gave an interview before she did, which is pretty amazing yes. because he's so decrepit, he apparently can't run for re-election but he can speak to the American people before the nominee of the Democratic Party. It's just insane. And he admits in that interview, by the way, that he was forced out. So I think the he follow-up does. He question- He sounded bitter as he hell. He did. And which I, I don't blame him no, for. No. I would be bitter I would be too. Position. And I think the follow-up question too, in your list of questions to Kamala is, were you part of the effort to oust him? Yeah. Uh, I do, I'm glad she doesn't want to tax tips though. You know, I've never met with a uh, tax break cut that I've disliked. Uh, if she wants to join that bandwagon, that's good. I Trump know. Trump should just pied piper her on all sorts of tax You're policies. Right, right. Flat tax, as you mentioned earlier, bring down the corporate income tax, bring down a-, a But I don't believe her. No. I, I certainly don't believe her. I mean, Trump proposed this back in June. I guess she was, it came up during one of her rallies last week. But the Biden administration record is very anti uh, yeah. people being able to keep their own money. She was the tie-breaking vote on the Inflation Reduction Act, which gave $80 billion more dollars to the IRS, allowed them to hire almost 90,000 more employees, also implemented a program that employers could opt into that made it harder for service workers to basically hide their their tip income. And then also yeah. through the American Rescue Plan, they went after services like Venmo yep. and Zella and PayPal yep. so that yep. you had a lower reporting threshold for business expenses that were paid through those accounts as well. And when you hire more um, IRS agents to do more audits, they never end up doing audits of like, you know, whether the, that in the leftist imagination, you want to go after very wealthy people who are cheating on their taxes and doing offshore accounting. No, no, no. They just harass more low income people who work multiple jobs or who have confusing sources of income. Um, Independent make, contractors. Yeah, those kinds of people, yep. their lives get made more difficult by um, the policies of... Right. And, funding more robust tax right. enforcement. And, well, and they love going after those people too because they don't have the money to afford the fancy right. lawyers and they accountants who are going to get them out of the audit without having to pay some massive penalty or God forbid, facing jail time or some sort of uh, massive payment they have to make in order to keep themselves out of prison. So uh, yeah, uh, the yeah. idea that Kamala is, is some pro-service worker candidate now is yeah. laughable. Well, she did an interview. Maybe she'll be asked about some of that. More free media right after this.